Amen. 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 You don't have this breath just to be used on anything. We have some breath that we need to raise up a praise to our Father in heaven who's able to sustain us and give us victory on this day. Father, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us an opportunity to stand before you today, Lord, to hear what your holy word has to say to each and every one of us. Lord, you have a specific instruction. You have a specific healing. Lord, for some, today is their day of salvation. Today is a day of deliverance for some. Today, somebody's going to break out of a situation that they've been proud in. Somebody's chains are going to fall today because of Jesus' power. Amen. Somebody's going to have their eyes lifted up unto the hills from whence cometh their help. Today, somebody's going to say, I believe that because I'm a child of God, even if I was sitting yesterday, two minutes ago, today, I can change my life by saying yes to Jesus, by saying yes to his Holy Spirit, by saying yes to his discipline in my life. Today is a day that somebody's going to make a step into their destiny. Do you believe that for yourself? Because I can't do it for you. Amen. You've got to believe that God is here, ready, willing, able to take you from where you are to where you're going. Amen. 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 Let the prayer go forth and the spirit be the one that enlivens you, that, that quickens you today. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 For those that have an offering that want to sow into the kingdom, now is an opportunity. You can do it online throughout the throughout the uh, uh, um, uh, hearing by the cash app on screen or within the house. Feel free to come and share what you want to invest in the kingdom of God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now we pray and thank you that individuals are joyful givers, that they are ready, willing, and able to sow into the kingdom. Lord, bless us that have stewardship over these funds, that they might be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that they might be used to reach the lost and equip the saved. Today, Lord, help us. And magnify these resources so that they can be used in a fruitful way. Lord, we want to see the fruit, amen, of what you have called for us to be here while we have this opportunity to walk on your earth. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. So the message today, four words. Fight to the finish. Amen. Everybody that's breathing has a fight on their hands and we need to fight to the finish. Amen. I want to thank Pastor Jewel for having a vision for men's month. This is a month we call Lord willing have men to come and, and preach each week. She had the vision and we're going to walk in that vision because while there are words from heaven, some of them fall on men in a different way and they fall on women in a different way. Each of us has a critical role in marking out our own salvation, deliverance, and then collectively being the kingdom people that God has called for us to be. Amen. So while men will be sharing this week, this um, this month, excuse me, let it, let it be known that these words are for everybody. Yes. Jesus didn't say, I'm just here to save them over there or, or them over there. Even when the Jews knew that they had a heritage, amen, from Abraham, that they had a, a lineage and that they were born into uh, uh, people that were being called by God, and that's the key piece, called by God to share the word throughout the world. Let it be known that once Jesus came, amen, and the spirit was flowing, everybody, everybody. needed to be part of the work. Amen. It's not who mama and grandmama was and what they did. It's what I got to do today with the breath that God has given me. Men, women, boys and girls, all have a place in God's kingdom. And right now, today, the word that I hear from God is fight to the finish. Fight to the finish. To the finish. And there's some steps that, that lead you into this fight so that you can be equipped, amen, because sometimes we got to get with the devil. we got to get with that spirit that's calling and trying to discourage us. we got to get with something that's trying to pull us back 
into a past that is not ours and, 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 and hold us back from the future and the destiny that God has called for each and every one of us. Look up today because today you're going to get some steps and some, and some scriptures to help you fight to the finish. Amen. Amen. Step number one. Start with gratitude and thanksgiving. Amen. You got to come in with a situation that's like, Lord, I thank you. I'm grateful for where you brought me. I'm grateful for what I have. I'm grateful for the breath that I'm breathing. I'm grateful and I'm thanking you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me up to this point in my life. Amen. Sometimes our situation clouds our vision and we can't be grateful for something. We all got, and I ain't, what ain't happening and who can't and what's against me. But today I'm just trying to encourage somebody. Be grateful for where God has brought you because you even understanding that you're in an ugly, downtrodden situation or you up against barriers and up against trials and tribulations. Just the fact that you can think and know that you are there lets you know that, hey, you got a chance. Amen. God is letting you know, yeah, I see. Yeah. He's, not, he's not confused. He doesn't, he's not um, um, blind to what's going on in your life. At the same time, he's calling you forward. He's calling you into a place that you maybe have not even walked in. He's calling your, your mind and your attitude into a place of gratitude. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad that I, I know where I'm at because even where, when I recognize that I'm in a situation where, where, where you are the only one that's going to be able to bring me out, amen, there's still a piece for me to do. My piece is to say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that I know that you're going to carry me through. Yeah. Thank you that you're going to help me in this situation. Thank you that you're going to put people around me to pray for me, to walk with me, to lead me, to help open up the scriptures so I can understand what thus saith the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I need to know. Yes. And you need to know that before you can get to the finish line, amen, you got to say thank you, Jesus. Yes. you got to say I appreciate and look, the little bit that I do have, because I know that the little bit that I do have, if I give it to you, God, you're going to help to expand. Yeah. You're going to help me to grow. You're going to help me to lean into a situation that I might have been afraid to do yesterday. But today, thank you, Jesus, I'm going to move forward. Amen. Come on. Start with gratitude, with gratitude. and thanksgiving. And this is not just what I, but it, you know, what I came up with, my little pea brain, amen, Isaiah 12. The first and second verse, Isaiah 12, 1 and 2. The prophet said, And on that day you will say, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you are angry with me, your anger has turned away and you comfort me. Behold God my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Amen. For the Lord God is my strength and song. Yes, he has become my salvation. So many, many years ago, the Lord impressed upon Isaiah to let folk know, hey, you, you know, God ain't always been pleased with me because I can't talk about you. I don't know about your life and your journey. I don't know about all the decisions you have made and what that happened in your life. But I know God at some point was real angry with me. And I thank God that the prophet said that though he was angry with me, his anger turned away. Amen. We don't need God to be angry with us. I thought it was rough when my father was angry with me. And let me be clear, it was rough. Amen. When he was angry with me because I was being disobedient, it, it was an ugly situation. Amen. And I thank God that you recognize that God, although he may be angry with you now, you always, if you're still breathing, you got an opportunity for him to turn his anger away. You got an opportunity to seek his comfort. You got an opportunity to access his strength because you cannot make the finish line. You won't be able to fight to the finish without God's strength. And we're going to go through that. Amen? Amen. Start with gratitude and thanksgiving. Step one. Because sometimes we fail. Sometimes people fail us. Sometimes we dropped into a failing situation. We dropped, you know, I was I didn't I didn't choose my parents. I didn't have that they were bad or anything like that. Amen. I didn't choose where I was growing up. I didn't choose the environment I was in when I was a child. Amen. And, and sometimes that's when we really need God <laughs> to help us. And then when we start making our own decisions, we don't always make the best decisions. We fail and fail and fail. And that's when we reap the anger of God. 
But thank you, Jesus, his anger has turned away. You can access his comfort, his strength, and say, yes, God is my salvation. He saved me. Point number two. To fight to the finish, you need to obey and accept his presence, his wisdom, and his strength. Amen. You need to accept his presence, wisdom, and strength. But it starts with obedience. We all know at some point, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. And sometimes we're going to be in situations again. Sometimes it's about doing, sometimes it's, a, it's, it's just the fact of where we are. True. And God is not surprised by either one of those. So think back. In the Old Testament, we got Moses leading the people of Israel through the wilderness, trying to get them over to the promised land. Focus like Moses. Oh no, why we why we why you pull us away from Egypt where we were slaves and we had three meals in a cot? Moses, why we got to follow the fuck Moses? You know, complaining, complaining, complaining. <laughs> Which is disobedience. Yeah, yeah. You ask for a savior, you ask for you ask to be saved, you ask to be pulled out of a situation, you ask for a new this, a new that. Come on. But it don't, it don't come out just the way you want. Lord, I wanted a five-bedroom house where I got this three. Lord, I wanted a, I wanted a Lexus while you giving me a shit. Lord, I want a steak while I got to eat these black, black out peas. Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> God is like, will you just shut up and obey? Because I'm here. God is letting people know he's right there. But we just like, you know, we looking at everything but the Lord. We're looking at all we ain't got, all what ain't happening, all what Jesus. Help us. Yes, Lord. Obey. Accept God's presence. Seek his wisdom and then get his strength. Amen. Think about it. Moses had led the people. Joshua had been walking right with them in lockstep, learning, mm -hmm. following orders, being obedient, doing what he was supposed to do. And then Moses dies. Now Joshua's there. And so, in true Lord fashion, mm -hmm. <laughs> God said, uh, Moses, my servant, is dead. It's time for you to step up. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to obey and accept that. Just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Just like I strengthened Moses, amen, I'm going to strengthen you. Just like I gave Moses wisdom to navigate and lead them hard-headed people, amen, through the wilderness, I'm going to help you. Amen. amen. You got to get some Joshua guidance up in you sometimes. You got to say, okay, Lord, yeah, you know what? That situation is over. Um, uh, Pookie them, they did it. Uh, Big Mama and them, they're not with us no more. All these situations that I'm looking at, Lord, I'm struggling with. And God is not surprised. He's like, yes, I know. Yes, daughter, yes, son, I know. But guess what? I'm still here. Guess what? I'm still going to strengthen you. Guess what? I'm still going to help you. Amen. And when we talk about obedience, Joshua 1-9, so he don't, God already told him, and he already knew Moses was dead. You got the baton. It's time to get it going. And then he reminds him. He says, Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed, intimidated, for the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. That just wasn't for Joshua. That's right. That's for you. That's Amen. for me. That's for you. That's, That's for you. Same God. Same spirit. Same strength. Yes. Same wisdom. Amen. Okay. Commanded you. Didn't say, hey, um, Joshua, what do you think about leading the children over into the promised land? You, you know, get back to me when you can. Shoot me a text. <laughs> You know, drop me a line, let me know, holla at me. Let, let me know. God is crystal clear. Then, let me rephrase that. God is always crystal clear. He was clear then, he's clear now. Men, women, boys, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified or dismayed, intimidated, for the Lord your God 
Not Pookie and Ray Ray. Not Big Mom, the Lord your God. Not your money. Not the crib you just bought. Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yeah. Amen. Everything else is going to fade away. Amen. Everything that we hold true to and hold on to, I can do. I remember, I remember uh, my grandfather used to say, um, uh, Jimmy, you know, I, I'm not going to buy no, um, no frame house, some house that's built with just wood. No, I need some bricks. I need something that's going to be substantial. I need something that's going to be standing strong in the times. Just like the three little pigs, you know. Uh, the, the, the one pig, I'm building my, my crib out of brick. Because we want something that's going to be substantial that will stand the test of time, that will help you through the trials and tribulations. And just as much as we put our faith in money and bricks and people, we got to put that much more in the Lord our God. Amen, amen, amen. Point number three. Starting out with gratitude and thanksgiving one. Obey Accept his presence, wisdom, and strength. Point number three. God knows that even with all that, even with years and centuries of prophecy and demonstrations of how good and strong God is, we human, mm -hmm. we gonna get scared. <laughs> we gonna be afraid. Men too, as much as we don't want to show it, it's times when we're afraid too. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death just like everybody else. And even while we're afraid, and it typically comes from circumstances that are just, whoa, you barely got enough. Or it can come from people. Know this. Man, woman, boy, girl cannot take your soul and take away your right to eternal life with the Father in heaven if you say that you are a child of God believing in his son as the only begotten son and following his spirit that he left here to guide us. Amen. Because there are conditions. Everybody ain't going to be in eternity with the Lord. So if you don't know him now, I encourage you to get saved. So back to point three, even while we're afraid, know that man cannot take your soul or eternity. He can't touch the things that are eternal with you in your relationship with the Father in heaven. At the same time, while we're down here in this body and encountering situations and circumstances, I turn you to Psalms, the 53rd, 50, excuse me, 56, Psalms 56, verses three and four, Psalms 5, 6. Three and four. Amen. Because <clears throat> David, strong and kingful as he was, amen, said this, When I am afraid, I will put my trust and faith in you, in God whose word I praise, because they ain't praising for me, them rocks ain't crying out for me, uh -huh. I praise in God I have put my trust. I shall not fear. Mm -hmm. What can mere man do to me? Come on. Because as long as we live in, it's some things that go come up that'll strike fear in our heart. Sometimes it's by surprise and we just kind of like immediately you know, uh, feel that fear, that visceral fear that runs through our body, heart start palpitating, you know, pumping Kool-Aid, as we used to say, <laughs> you know, and just, uh, sweating, amen, I'm not sweating because I'm afraid, uh, it's hot up in here, amen, um, or some other situations that don't come up suddenly, they come up nice and slow, ooh, I got a little bump on my arm, what's that, what's that all about, I, mm. I hope that ain't, I hope that ain't the big C. Uh -oh. Ooh. Nowadays, you know, folks get a sneeze. It's like, ooh, I hope that ain't COVID. Uh, ooh. You know, sometimes stuff just ease up on you. Right. Sometimes you get in relationships and see them all nice on the front end. Ooh, man, they treat me right. 
ooh, ooh, that's cool. Then somehow at some point in the relationship, it turns the corner. And oh, now you're afraid to say something that might be different than what that other person was thinking. And you're afraid to, to speak up when you know that something ain't right. You're afraid to, 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 to speak out in a situation where you know things need to be checked. But you're afraid. Mm -hmm. These fears can come from many different spaces and places. Sometimes we can just be by ourselves and be thinking about the future. And based on our past, we're like, ooh, the future ain't looking too good. I'm kind of afraid. What's, what's really going to happen here? Right. And this is just common to the human condition. True. So the antidote is, okay, well, what can I trust? I can't trust my past. I can't trust what, 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 what happened. I can't trust something. What, 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 what can I trust? In whom can I put my faith in Amen. to help me get steady? Because you know when you're fearful, it might manifest itself in your body, it might manifest itself in your mind, the way you think, it might manifest in you. And, and, and basically, sometimes, the fear will paralyze people. Yeah. I'm just, I, I, don't know, I can't do that. And, and don't get me wrong, there's some things you need to be afraid of. That's a whole long list, so let, let, let's go back to this. But you don't need to be afraid of moving forward and changing as God is leading you to change. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid to say, you know what, that was me, and, and now I'm not that liar anymore. Or, you know what, I don't know how to do this, but I, I, I've been praying and the Lord has led me to some resources, has led me to a class that I can take, maybe I can learn how to you know, I'm not talking about anybody in particular because I had to do this too. Maybe I can learn how to drive. Or maybe I can learn how to work with these, you know, this technology that I'm not really familiar with and haven't had much exposure to. Maybe I can learn how to maybe look at different translations of the Bible so that I can understand the these, the thous, the thus, and the therefores. And it, it's breaking, bro broke down into something that I can understand because at the end of the day, if I can't understand it and use it in my life, what good is it? Right. But I'm not going to be afraid to reach out and say, hey, I don't quite understand that. Hey, can Amen. you help me? Hey, Amen. can you? And, and, and so I suffer from this, you know, at different times in my life. It's like, ooh, struggling over here. But I ain't trying to let nobody know because I'm afraid that they're going to look at me sideways or they're going to look at me and say, oh, I thought you was all that, but now I see you really ain't a bag of chips. You really just out here struggling like me. You know, we can't be afraid to ask for help. Men, women, boys, and girls all need help. Oftentimes it starts with what God has for you, Amen. and then it also can, can, can be manifested in what other people have for you to help you. Amen. So even while afraid, you can know that nothing can take away your relationship with God and steal your, your, your place in heaven. So while you're down here trying to bring heaven to earth, amen, be courageous amen. and step forth. So, started out with gratitude and thanksgiving. You obey, accept his presence for his strength and wisdom. And then even when you're afraid, because that's going to happen, you put your faith and trust in him and even if you just have to say well I don't know God but I'm going to follow you I don't know God but I'm going to listen to you I don't know God but I'm, I'm going to move forward in this space because this is what you're calling me to point number four once you start to break through amen because you will you will start breaking through and doing things that you've never done before you'll see things that you didn't you didn't see before as the Lord leads you'll be You'll be in this space. Then you, what you have to do is you got to own that. You got to say, you know what? I, I, I'm, tr I'm being transformed right now. I'm learning today to be better than I was yesterday. I'm not competing with A, B, and C. I'm competing with me. I'm trying to move forward and beat my yesterday. Today, yesterday, I didn't do no workout. Today, I'm going to do 10 minutes. Yesterday, all I ate was candy corn and, and, and warm salt peanuts. Today, I'm going to eat a vegetable. I might actually try out, 
you know, something else. Yesterday, all I did was kick it at the spot and then take up all the air in the room and kick it with whoever I wanted to because it felt good at the moment. Today, I'm going to think a new way. I'm going to say, well, Lord, what is it that you really have for me? I know I was with my homies yesterday and it was all good, but at the end of the day, I felt empty. Amen. And now, I'm looking for some purpose. I'm looking to move with intention. I'm looking to hit some goals. Amen. My goal isn't to be the party animal that I was yesterday. It's to be the man, woman, boy, and girl that you called me to be. Because guess what? Amen. God's got something good for you. Amen. Amen. So you got to own what God has given you. Because if you don't, you can, you can be, you know, it's like getting a platter. You know, you're just getting a platter full of all the, all the food that, that you like. But if you don't put your hand out, pick it up and eat it, <laughs> it ain't going to help. Now one day, same thing in the spirit. Second Timothy 1 and 7, a familiar passage of scriptures that, a familiar passage to some, may be new to others, and that's all good because... Thank God that, you know, even if you if today is the first day you heard this, it's still fresh, it's still powerful, it can still do what God has, has for it to do in your life. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, But God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear. King James going to say fear, amen? But it, 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 these other pieces are part of that. But, but, thank you, Jesus, He yes. has given us mm -hmm. a spirit of power, and love and of sound judgment and personal discipline. Amen. Abilities, capabilities that result, amen, because when you have sound <clears throat> judgment and personal discipline, you gain abilities that can result in a calm, amen, thank you, Jesus, well-balanced mind and self-control. Yes, God. Amen. And so all you have to do, because this is great, it sounds wonderful, you know, a lot is not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind, you know, power of love and a sound mind, it sounds beautiful, I love it, at the same time, it don't mean a hill of beans if you don't reflect on it, and say, okay, wait a minute, God is trying to, trying to give me a spirit, not giving me a spirit of fear, so, hey, when that comes up, I got to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I cast, back, cast that fear back to the pit of hell, from whence it came, because I need more power, amen? I need to know how to have a breakthrough. I need to understand how to kick this homework, kick this homework bucket. Hey, hey Lord, I need to, I need your love. I need something that's going to help me um, share love. How, how, A, how I can love myself. Thank you, Jesus, because that's number one. And B, how I can share that love and have an abundance of love to work with those that you place in my pathway. And everybody in your pathway is somebody that you need to partner with. At the same time, they need to be shown the love and dignity and respect of being a creature uh, created by God. And then God will, through his sound judgment, amen, discernment, let you know who you're going to partner with. But ultimately, you got to partner with yourself. Amen. you got to say, okay, mm, what personal disciplines do I need to undertake? Right. What do I need to take care of? Be, you know, and it starts with the basics. You know, sometimes it's like maybe I need to get seven hours of sleep. You know, I mean, I've been working on three, and it's been working for me for a minute. But oh man, at the, at the middle of the day, I'm struggling. Amen. Um, well, maybe it has to. Maybe some of the personal disciplines have to do with what you eat because you are what you eat. Amen. If I eat sugar all day, I'm gonna be overworking my pancreas, trying to pump insulin into my bloodstream. So that I don't get, you know, go into some type of coma, amen. Um, it might work out into, you know, what it is you do with your with your limbs if you have the ability to move. Not everybody does, so I'm mindful of that. Amen. But what are the personal disciplines? What is it when you look back and say, man, I was doing this all this time? It might be time for a change. I might need to change one habit. Yeah. I might need to change one thing to help me move forward, amen? Because if you want that power of love and, 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 and you want it to make a difference in your life, you have to apply it. You can't just say the scripture, say the scripture, say the scripture, and never change your behavior. Amen. So, I got one more point. After you kind of own what God has given you, we kind of go back to what really what's the source. 
And and the last the, the last point before we get to fight to the finish, because ultimately we'll be trying to get to the finish line before three o'clock. Amen. <laughs> so you, 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 the, the next point is no that you have the victory in Jesus. Amen. So we started with that in, in, in the worship service. And Philippians 1 and 28, I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. I forgot to mention, all, these were all out of the Amplified. So those who were looking into King James, be like, where well, you get all the extra words from? That ain't what I'm in my Bible. Um, these are the Amplified <laughs> translations. Philippians 1, 28 in the Amplified. And it kind of builds on what, you, what God is calling for you to own. And Philippians 1, 28 says, and, and in no way be alarmed or intimidated in anything by your opponents. For such constancy and fearlessness on your part is a clear sign, a proof, and a seal for them of their impending destruction. Okay. But a clear sign for you okay. of deliverance and salvation and that too from God. Let me say that again. In no way be alarmed or intimidated in anything, amen, by your opponents. Right. I don't care who it is. I don't care what they bring. I don't care what the Spirit is trying to say to you. If it ain't of God, it ain't right. And it ain't got the might to overcome what God has planted in you. Amen. You have to know that. You got to be about that. Amen. You got to be a gangster in the spirit with God in front, behind, on the side, letting you know. Amen. Don't bring that crap up in here. I'm not about them lies. No, y'all about darkness. I'm about light. Get and, and that's right. You got to be just as strong as you are when you kind of, you know, sometimes we get kind of puffed up in ourselves. Everybody got a little something that they real good at. And they feel like, can't nobody stop them in that. You know, and that's okay. You got to play to your strengths. You know, I'm a, I'm a leader. I coach. I do different things. So I play to my strengths in the natural. But this is a whole nother level that you need to deal with. Amen. You got to play to the strength of God in the spirit. Amen. First and foremost, for yourself. Because that's going to give you, like I said here, that's going to give your clear sign of deliverance and salvation. You need deliverance for something, you better get on it. You want to name, people want to name and claim money and cars and all. I need to claim clarity. I need to claim truth. I need to claim that I'm going to walk in, in my salvation. I need to claim that I'm a child of God. And whatever God is calling for me to do, that's what I'm standing in. That's your real strength. Amen. Because with that, you can make it to the finish. Finish. <laughs> Lord, help me. So I grew up <laughs> listening to Popeye the Sailor Man <laughs> for you old folk <laughs> that's out there. And he used to have his song, I'm strong to the finish because I eat my spinach. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> it used to crack me up. And when I was <laughs> like, Lord, <laughs> Fight to the finish. Do I got these spinach? <laughs> Help me, Jesus. <laughs> now, the spinach is good. I didn't like it when I was little, but now, boy, I eat some spinach now. And you know about spinach for y'all that cook? You can have a whole pound of spinach in a bag. You put that spinach in a pot or, in a, uh, or in, a, uh, in a pot or something like that with a little bit of water, heat it up, and it'd be like, <laughs> You know, you got about, about that much spinach. <laughs> I digress, but fight to the finish. Amen. Amen. Whether you eat spinach or not. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And I'm gonna finish up with this. This is the last, this is the last scripture. And um, ultimately I just wanted to get us to the finish line again. Like I said, before 3 p.m. for those that are with us in real time. So we started out with gratitude, fighting to the finish. You got to start out, Lord, I thank you. I'm, I'm grateful for what you got. And guess what? I'm going to obey you. 
Because when I obey you, I got strength, I got wisdom from you, I, I, I feel your presence, and I got juice, so to speak, that spiritual juice, amen? And even though I'm going to be afraid, I might get scared here and there, some situations, I, I take, none of these, take none of these things on earth, take away the fact that I got a relationship with you, and they can't access my soul, and they're not going to be able to stop me from being able to be for my, uh, my, my eternal uh, salvation, my eternal resting place, my eternal uh, connection with you as my Father in heaven. And I, and I know that you got the power and the love and, and you've given me a sound man. And now I see and reflect on all these things together. And I, that lets me know that I got victory in Jesus. And when people come with that drama, I can be like, ah, stop that. Don't even come over here with that. Because we ain't about that. We're about what God has for me. I'm about walking out God's pathway for myself. Not what you say. Not what Bookie and Roy, Roy Roy say. This is all about what God has for me. Amen. And finally, to be equipped for the fight in the spiritual realm, amen, that manifests itself in many, many natural ways. Ephesians 6, 8, excuse me, 6, verses 10 through 18. <clears throat> uh, here we go. In the message verse translation this time, the message. And so... He says, and that about wraps it up, because this is me too for me. This is wrapping it up. God is strong, and he wants you to be strong. Amen. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons, amen, in the spirit and in the natural, of the best materials. Come on. And put them to you so you will be able to stand up. Mm -hmm. To everything the devil throws your way. It's not he gonna have it ain't gonna be a sneak attack because you already got spiritual awareness. Amen. This is no weekend war. This is not a Sunday afternoon, beautiful weekend war. You fight it and then it's done. No. This is no weekend war that you walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. This is for keeps a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all of his angels. Thank God you got our Father in heaven and Jesus who is more powerful than the devil and all of his angels. Get your access. Verses 13 through 18 says, be prepared. Amen. Don't say I'm going to get ready. Be ready. Yes, right. Why? Because you're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Mm -hmm. I can't stand up here and preach just based on what James knows, just based on what I just based on what I didn't learn, just based on my experience. Yada, yada. That's not what this is about. And if anything good comes from this, it came from God. Because I can't handle it on my own. You can't handle what's going on in this world on your own. Amen. Take all the help you can get. I'm going to add in there, not that I'm adding anything to the scripture, that comes from the Lord and his people who are following him in spirit and in truth. Because some help ain't help. Amen. Take all the help you can get. I just needed to clarify that every weapon God has issued Every weapon God has issued mm -hmm. so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you will still be on your feet. Amen. And, and, and this is in the spirit because you can be flat on your back, no movement of limbs connected to God through the spirit and be warring against the principalities, be warring against anything that is trying to stand up to the power of God. So this is in the spirit. Amen. And then it manifests itself in the natural. Amen. But you usually see the natural manifestation over time. Mm -hmm. I've been studying. I've been working. I haven't seen no results. I'm discouraged, Lord. But now, ooh, wait a minute. I see a light. I see a glimpse. I see something that God has done that I could not do by myself. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Finally, these are the core things that you want to see manifested. 
truth in you. Righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. That's why I'm trying to go slow so you can take them and run with them. Mm -hmm. I can't do it for you. Can't nobody do it for you. You apply the truth and righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation in your life. Mm -hmm. Because you'll need them throughout your life. Amen. God's word is an indispensable weapon. You cannot do without it. In the same way, Prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray when you get up. Pray through the day. Pray when you go down at night. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Amen. That's all I got. Amen. That's all God gave me. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are the one that empowers us to fight to the finish. You are the one that gives us the strength, the love, the wisdom. It's your presence that helps us, Lord. Even today, Lord, we wouldn't know which way to go if it weren't for you. Help us to hear what you are saying to our hearts. Help us to access what it is you have for us to walk out our destiny. Lord, help us to love those as you lead us in the way that they need to be loved. You know, help us to be your feet, your hands, to touch folk, to reach folk, pointing them to your son Jesus and connecting them to you, your Holy Spirit, so that they can be all that you have called for them to be. Today, Lord, I just pray that someone is encouraged to fight to the finish. Each of us has a different path and, and a different lifespan here on earth with our mortal bodies, Lord. But as we continue to stay close to you, we'll be able to do that victoriously. We'll be able to lead an abundant life, Lord. And don't let anybody dissuade or pull us away from that relationship with you, Lord. Help us and strengthen us to fight to the finish. Fight to the finish with your power. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen and amen. A couple of prayer requests. I'm um, asking for healing. Um, healing. Prayer for those that have lost loved ones. Yes, and Lord. just prayer for the, just the children of God in general for us to walk in our purpose. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, we know that your healing power is available to those that need it. Lord, I call on your healing power to touch each and every person that is in need right now in the name of Jesus. We know that we can, we can call on you and that your healing power is available. It can heal and transform even right now as we speak. Lord, we're on one accord. For your healing, Lord. Heal bodies, minds, and spirits, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you would touch and comfort those that have lost loved ones, Lord. Help the legacy of love, the legacy of power that flow through the love of those that they love, Lord. Be evident in the lives of those that are right here with us today, Lord. Help us to build on what has already gone forth by, with our ancestors. Help us to build on and, 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 and continue to, to carry forth a legacy of love, a legacy of unity, a legacy of power, a legacy, Lord, that is honoring those that have gone on before us, Lord. Right now, Lord, many are grieving and hurting, and I just pray that you would give joy to them in these hours, that you would give joy to their families in these minutes, that you would give comfort to those that are aching in their heart, Lord, that are aching for the physical presence of a mother, Lord. I know my sister um, Brandy lost her mother and others, Lord, are grieving the loss of those that have cared for them even before they could care for themselves, Lord. Help us to honor and continue to carry forward and build upon the love and the legacy of the ones that have gone before us, who have loved us, who have been with us, who have been a, 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 a pillar in our lives. Lord, we thank you and continue to pray for those families, Lord, that have lost loved ones. And Lord, I just pray right now, the last prayer request, uh, can you remind me, that was um, um, guidance... 
Oh, just um, guidance, help us to walk in our purpose. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that anybody under the sound of my voice that is looking for guidance, Lord, around what their purpose is, around where, where, where they need to go and what they need to do, that you would make it crystal clear to them, Lord, the step for today, the step for next week, the step for the next month. Even, Lord, I pray that you give them a vision of what it looks like months out or, or years out. If the Lord says so, I will be X. If the Lord gives me this, I will do that. Lord, I thank you that you are going to give people the steps that they need to take in order to walk out their purpose, in order to walk out their destiny. Make it plain, Lord. We use big words sometimes and we just want things to be so plain and so clear and so actionable that people say, you know what, the God is leading me to, I'm going to study this. Or God is leading me to reach out to this person. Or God is leading me into the word. Or God is leading me to share a prophecy. Or God is leading me to preach. Or God is leading me to walk and be part of the, um, the community group. God is leading me in order to, to help myself so that I can begin to help my family. God is leading me. Lord, I pray that you fill in the gaps, fill in the blanks for people who are looking for that direction. Yes. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray and thank you, Lord, today. And the church said, Amen, amen. and amen. 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 amen.